Hey guys, this is Jess from Stellar Tarot and I want to welcome you back to another History and Traditions of video. Today we're going to be talking about the new, um, about Beltane, sorry, the History and Traditions of Beltane. And I am filming today in my new happy place, which is my new hammock chair on our balcony. And it is raining today, but it is still a beautiful spring day. You might hear some of those honking sounds in the background. I think there's some sort of, um, I don't know, like parade or birthday or something like that that is going on in the neighborhood. And, um, you know, since we're isolated in our homes uh, because of COVID-19, there are a lot of people that are taking to the streets in some ways to celebrate things. We had a, a little girl's birthday just a couple houses down the road from us a couple days ago, and they had a little birthday parade for her from friends and family. So it's not something that I can really do anything about at this moment, so we're just going to roll with it. And hopefully the predominant audio will be the rain on the roof or the spring birds who are twitter pated flying around and all of that good stuff. So let's get right into it. I have my notes. I've got about four pages of them. I try my best when I research these videos to be as accurate as possible, but please know that um, because of the predominance of uh, myths and misinformation that keep getting repeated on in various books and website resources and things like that, some of what I may end up saying in this video may not be completely accurate. It's not to say it's any less meaningful for us as neo-pagans and neo-wickeds, uh, witches, um, but it is to say that some of my information may not be 100% accurate, and um, I try my best, and it's just one person running the show here, so give me a break. Um, if you do have the correct information for something that I talk about, please feel free to post about it in the comments, drop a link to relevant information, that sort of thing. I would love to be properly informed, um, but yeah, do the best that we can with what we have. So, Beltane or Bieltana or many other pronunciations or also um, Kalan May or Kalan Mai, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. They're one of the original four festivals that were celebrated um, throughout the Celtic lands like the UK, Germany, uh, France and other mainland European areas. Um, and by those peoples in some form or another throughout uh, probably for most likely Neolithic times up until when the Christians took things over and Christianized uh, the different cultures and peoples. The exact etymology of the word Beltane is kind of hard to pin down because it is pretty much exactly the same throughout many different languages and cultures. So in um, Irish and Gaelic, it may have come from the words bello or bale, meaning um, bright and shining or white or to reference bale fire and may specifically have come from the word for bale fire. Um, in Slavic, it may have come from the word bielo, meaning white. So there's a lot of different languages that have etymologies of the words that come um, very much down to the same few sorts of letters and um, <clears throat> various pronunciations and words. It's very hard to know exactly where the etymology of the words comes from, specifically to Beltane, um, but from what we can tell, a lot of various cultures across uh, Europe, from Slavic nations to um, uh, like Scandinavian and other northern European nations to eastern European all the way into uh, the UK and all of the different uh, countries and cultures that are associated within there. It looks like they all may have used relatively the same um, root words and terms for this festival. This uh, festival and the Sabbath were commonly held around the April 30th to May 1st mark. It is one of the four original Gaelic festivals um, included with Samhain, Imolg, and Lunasa. They did not typically celebrate the, um, uh, the solstices and stuff um, as part of their traditional sabbats. Those were more recognized as specific special days because of um, how much the time of the, the sun was in the, in the sky, particularly the solstices, not so much the equinoxes. 
Um, the Welsh festival of Calamai is also, um, I'm going to say Calamai. I don't know if it's Calamai or Calamai. We're just going to go with that. Um, so these festivals are referred to often in early literature, particularly uh, Cal um, early, pardon me, Irish literature. And um, Calan Mai means literally the first of summer or the first of that month, as um, literally Calan uh, comes from the words Calens, um, Calens, and so that is a Welsh word for the first of. So you can have Calan Mai, you can have Calan, and then whatever their word for June, July, August is. So Calan is simply the first of. Um, early Irish literature refers to Beltane as celebrating the, um, the beginning of summer and when the agricultural community would drive their cattle and other types of livestock to their summer grazing pastures. For us, the idea of it being a marker as an agricultural time to do something um, new and important like driving your uh, livestock to grazing pastures seems like a very... Um, just like agricultural thing. It doesn't feel like it's any particularly spiritual thing to us, but we need to remember at the time that livestock was a huge part of the Celts and Neolithic peoples and ancient peoples lives and lifestyles. It's where they got um, a lot of their nourishment from things like milk and meat when the animal would die, they would uh, strip them of their hides to use to make leather and leather goods. Bones and other parts of the animals could be useful in a variety of different things. Bone was the source of material for things like making everyday items such as combs, even cups and plates and other things like that. Uh, we have early uh, examples of bone needles being used to sew everyday garments together and even the blood would often be used in things like uh, devotions and rituals and uh, as parts of nourishment. So we need to remember that the idea of taking care of livestock, of blessing them, of making sure that they were taken care of and kept healthy was intrinsically linked to part of their spiritual path because the livestock literally helped to keep those peoples alive. It was a big part of their ability to sustain themselves and it was a big um, source of revenue and it was a source of money and of trading goods as well. If you wanted to get different items, you could perhaps trade in livestock. So they were a form of currency. So we see cattle especially being referred to a lot in Irish literature, and it's because livestock were very valuable parts of the, uh, the culture's lifestyles and livelihoods and abilities to feed and sustain themselves. So livestock were valuable. Uh, they were a form of currency, but they were also a source of um, being thought of as uh, partly divine and being sacred to their culture. So um, rituals were performed to protect crops and livestock as well as the homes. Um, and these rituals would have uh, been designed to uh, protect their health and uh, to promote their fertility, their growth, to bless the home and bring in things like abundance and uh, to stave off illnesses and other things that could afflict them and that could potentially bring a lot of negative experiences into their lives. So we have the obvious examples of bonfires being lit and cattle being driven around them or between them. We have examples of new couples hoping to either bless their union or um, bless their bodies with uh, the gift of children and healthy children through, uh, you know, the experience of giving birth being lived through again and again. Couples would sometimes jump over the bonfire flames or embers as a blessing and as a source of good luck. <clears throat> it was also a tradition to put out fires within the homes and then relight the homes from uh, the embers or from lit branches and boughs from the bonfires themselves. We hear this specific example being given a lot in both Yule and Beltane and it's really unsure, at least from my standpoint, 
um, you know, which one of them was practiced more widely. Um, or if it was pretty equal amongst different cultures. It's hard to say when um, the fires of the homes were definitely extinguished and then relit from a sacred fire source um, throughout the year. So it is definitely possible that there were some cultures that it extinguish the home fires, the hearth fires, and relit them from sacred fire sources at both times of the year. It's possible that some places may have done it at one time or another. It's really unknown, um, but definitely the relighting of a hearth fire, of a home fire, from a fresh and sacred and blessed source is something that could be very important to a lot of communities, and it may have happened at times other than Beltane and Yule as well. Um, it's very hard to say because, as we know, Druids and other um, early man did not write down their specific experiences. Um, but certainly relighting household fires could be part of a traditional or even a modern Beltane festival. We also have examples of feasting being very important uh, during these times and uh, for there to be a gathering together of people and an encouraging of people to get together. There's a lot of myths in uh, modern neo-paganism that these were times when it was acceptable to sleep with people other than your spouse um, or that sex was encouraged and this is only um, supposition. This is only educated guessing. Uh, we're not really sure how um, open they were about sexuality and sex outside uh, the marriage bed during this time. We're not sure how uh, solidified a union between two people over, um, you know, basically uh, um, having uh, a single partner throughout your life was we're not sure how seriously this idea was taken and was implemented in some of those earlier cultures. Certainly though, fertility was a main um, theme of Beltane and definitely we have evidence that uh, children conceived at Beltane were considered to be lucky or to have a touch of magic or otherworldly energy about them. Um, this is also a time to decorate the homes, uh, the ritual spaces, and sometimes even uh, the livestock with seasonal flowers and boughs and other things like that. Uh, it was particularly uh, known that people would use uh, colors associated with fire, so reds, oranges, and yellows to decorate their home spaces. Um, but really any flowers at all could be brought into uh, the home spaces and uh, to the feasting areas and used to decorate it to really bring in that springy, summer, summery energy. Um, holy wells were often visited um, around the Beltane time as well. Offerings or prayers or wishes may be left at some of these holy wells and uh, often these uh, holy wells would be visited to collect water from as well to use to bless the home or to be used um, to uh, bless a particular person, particularly if they might have been struggling with fertility, with, um, you know, uh, maybe losing babies or not being able to get pregnant and things like that, holy wells would sometimes be visited and goddesses may be applied to to help bless them with the gift of uh, children and pregnancy or pregnancies that resulted in healthy uh, children. Um, and it's also a very popular myth that uh, the dew on Beltane morning may be collected and uh, the face or the body or the hair to be washed or rinsed or blessed with this dew because it was thought that it might anoint them with otherworldly beauty. That there was a touch of the fey um, magic in that dew that could bless you with some of that, some of that uh, mythic mythological fey beauty. Um, it's exactly opposite Samhain on the Wheel of the Year and the Gregorian calendar. So it is thought that the veil uh, between the living and the dead and the veil between our world and other planes of existence are thinner around this time of the year. And certainly there is that sort of uh, feeling of magic in the air the same way that there is around Samhain, at least 
from my perspective. And um, it is thought that it was easier to communicate with ancestors and with the Fae around Beltane. So it is possible that people sought the blessings of ancestors uh, or the wisdom of ancestors advice perhaps in the uh, areas of making and raising families or just would be honored as uh, being remembered in happier times uh, during this time of the year. It also was very common to leave out uh, blessings for the Fae. <clears throat> Oftentimes it's thought uh, it was in, uh, these devotions and these offerings that were left out for the Fae were encouraged around this time of the year so that the Fae did not make mistress, mischief in your house and in your home. But it's also thought that there is um, an element of magic about this as well, that uh, communicating with the Fae can mean that you were touched by otherworldly energies a little bit. And so there is also uh, evidence and certainly um, uh, there's a lot of schools of thought that think that uh, people getting in touch with the Fae around the time of Beltane would have been doing this for magical divination or blessing purposes, not just to uh, ward them away with pretty gifts and, and offerings to uh, keep them from making mischief, but it was thought that it was a favorable connection because the Fae were essentially land spirits, so you wanted the blessings and you wanted... Um, the uh, the ple you you wanted to be in the good graces of the land spirits, shall we say? So um, sometimes uh, it was thought that you could uh, see the Fae more at Beltane than any other time, and that it could be a um, a sign of good luck uh, to be blessed with a glimpse of a fairy folk creature. Flowers and plants that are commonly worked with around this time basically extends to any greening plant or uh, to any flowering tree or shrub. Pretty much whatever is uh, growing in your neck of the woods around Beltane and it is truly uh, becoming, um, you know, looking fuller and greener, casting that beautiful shade like that beautiful willow behind me right now. Um, any sorts of flowering bushes are uh, plant spirits and allies that you can work with. But a few that were seemed to be especially important to uh, our ancestral peoples, particularly the Celts, were um, any roses, particularly primroses, seem to be very important, but that may be a May Day, like a later Christianized association, it's hard to tell. Um, but roses certainly are a great one to work with right now. Rowan, Hawthorn, Gorse, hazel those are all really majorly important ones because of course they also happen to be some of the sacred druidic trees that um, were within the oom alphabet and just appear to be uh, sacred to the druids in general so any one of those that flowers around this time is thought to be particularly sacred at beltane um it's also these types of flowering trees and branches were also a focus during May Day celebrations in the more Christian times. And sometimes um, boughs or May bushes or flowering branches would be decorated and then either passed around the communities or even like playfully stolen from one home to another by all of the uh, occupiers of different dwellings in an area. And it was thought that by bringing the May flower, the May bush, the May uh, branch, whatever it was it was used in the community, into your home was to bring into uh, your home a blessing from the spirit of the trees. And, um, you know, that sort of energy really ties into the origins of the fae and different fairy folk energies and the druidic magic of the trees. So some of this like folk magic or folk customs that lived on even into Christianized uh, areas of Europe may have had their uh, their beginnings from more ancient uh, traditions and uh, ideas and schools of thought. Um, May Day certainly seems to just be a Christianized uh, version of Beltane, and it was a chance to celebrate the coming of summer, uh, you know, the, the greening of the earth, the fact that it was warmer and you could go outside. People saw more of their neighbors and of their communities at this time. Roads were easier to travel. It was easier to get around. Trade was heightened. 
seasonal foods were starting to become available again that had not been available for months. So May Day seems to just be a um, acceptably Christianized version of Beltane that was brought into modern times to sort of celebrate these new energies and the changing of the season that was so joyful for so many people. The Maypole, however, is not a historically pagan tradition, at least not that we can prove. Um, it is certainly part of modern May Day celebrations, uh, particularly in Europe and in the UK, but it is not so much a tradition that is celebrated within North America. There is some, there are, there are some places, and certainly it seems that it was more popular many decades back, but um, we don't really have a lot of uh, May Day celebrations that happen in Canada and the United States as a regular thing. And I think that has to do more with the, the spread of fundament, fundamental Christianity, not taking into account like older traditions that may survive in places like Britain and France and, and other countries that um, that sort of uh, harsher and less decorative version of Christianities uh, just have not survived and taken off to the same way that they have done on this side of the pond. Um, Ronald Hutton is a very celebrated uh, folklorist and historian in uh, England and he has done a ton of research as we know um, on uh, witchcraft traditions within the, the pagan community. And he does not find any evidence of the Maypole being a celebrated uh, pagan tradition. It is something that there is evidence for, certainly during Christian times, more modern uh, times, you know, just within the last few centuries rather than many, many centuries past. Um, but it appears to be a tradition that was just done for the sake of beauty and fun and just celebrating the warmer months. Um, the fact is, there just is not a lot of evidence, pardon me, there's not a lot of evidence to clarify the origins of the Maypole. There are many schools of thought as to where the Maypole has originated from, what its purpose is, what its symbolism is. A lot of modern pagans call it a phallic symbol and the, um, the floral wreath that often decorates the top of a maypole to be represented, representative of the feminine and of cycles and all that kind of stuff. But it may just be that wreaths were really easy to construct and to adorn the top of the pole with and matched its otherwise the pole's round shape. Um, it, it's really not known. There is an equal amount of evidence and debates that happen between historians uh, about where the origins of the maypole is. Is it pagan in origin? Is it Christian in origin? Guys, we just don't really know. And it's one of those things that is just going to probably remain a mystery um, for the rest of time, or at least for a very long time. Um, there is quite amount of uh, evidence to suggest that it may have been Germanic in origins, at the very least, that it may not have been celebrated on the British Isles, for instance, um, for much, much later than it was um, around in the Germanic and more Gaulish areas of the Celts. Um, it also seems to have taken off in the Germanic Christian communities earlier than it did in other communities before it spread around to other parts of Europe. Um, either way though, it is still a valuable, useful, and uh, symbolic part of neo-paganism and neo-witchcraft and neo-wiccan traditions today for Beltane. And whether it is an ancient pagan symbol in its origin or whether it is an ancient Christian symbol that was eventually adopted more to, to be in line with pagan symbolism that we use now, it's still a valuable and beautiful and symbolic reference. And if it's been part of your uh, Beltane rituals for years, don't stop. Don't make it any less important to you. Um, Modern versions of Beltane and modern celebrations often seem to, ref uh, to revolve really highly around uh, the bonfire. And particularly, there seems to be a lot of wonderful celebrations for Beltane at historical places like Stonehenge and other really beautiful hills uh, in the UK and uh, other really beautiful places in Europe. 
and the bonfires, be naked, having sex, and lots of flowers and feasting and drinking seem to be the celebrations of Norm around Beltane. And I think it's a really wonderful excuse to certainly connect with uh, your inner sexy person. Wow, we're really getting poured on now. I certainly think that it is a wonderful excuse to really get in touch with your own sacred sexuality as it is important to you if that is not something that is part of your lifestyle or your traditions to um, abstain from that if that is something that you wish to do. Because of the thinning of the veil, it's often thought in modern like neo-paganism traditions that it makes for an ideal time to perform divinations because you can kind of access more of the spiritual knowledge with the thinning of the veil and all that good stuff. And I think it makes a perfectly wonderful time to celebrate ancestors as well, especially if, like me, you have some ancestors that may have uh, passed away around this time, like my grandfather passed away in early June. So this is kind of like the closest thinning of the veil time that I feel I can really connect with him with. Um, also, my mother-in-law passed away in early July, so this feels like a very uh, potent time to, um, to, to honor her and to, to give offerings to her. Whereas a lot of my other ancestors who I have personally lost did actually pass away in the fall to the winter, so Samhain feels more appropriate for other ancestors. I don't typically work with the Fae a whole lot myself in my practice. I tend to do more um, of a land spirits and local uh, genus loci type of um, honoring and just honoring the, the spirits and the traditions and um, the energies that have existed in my particular neck of the woods um, for, you know, so the centuries before my ancestors ever migrated and colonized over here. So I do try during Beltane to honor the uh, local land spirits and to honor any um, unresolved energies that may be there as a result of colonization. I do have a very small part of um, Native American ancestry and heritage within my maternal bloodline. So I do feel that it's also very important to honor those uh, people who may have been um, repressed, wiped out, or mistreated by my European ancestors, which resulted in me being here. I like to, at Beltane, recognize the fact that I live on land that was effectively stolen and colonized by white peoples many, many, many years ago. And, um, to honor the imbalance that has been done to this land as a result and to honor uh, the often unnamed fallen native people who whose voices were silenced and repressed over the centuries since uh, the white people came over here. I think it is a very important thing to honor and to acknowledge when the veil is thinner and when those particular ancestors of mine and ancestors of this land may be able to hear and feel that uh, that devotion and that respect coming from me. So that is something that you may want to consider adding into your own Beltane rituals as well. Um, I'm going to leave in the uh, description box any pertinent links that I may have to other Beltane videos that I have done in the past. And I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you have other information or relevant links that move along with the uh, history and tradition sort of aspect, of this um, Sabbath. I would love for you to leave them in the comments below so that this video both produced by me and the comments and the conversations that happened in the comments below can be relevant for other people in the future. I do so hope that you guys are going to have a really wonderful and blessed Beltane and I am wishing you all the best. I wish you the, the best of luck having your own solo uh, rituals at home and celebrations. And I hope that all of you take very good care of yourselves during this rather strange and unusual and historic time that we are living in. All of my, bless my blessings to you. And until the next video, be wise, be brave, 
be magical. And hey, if you're experiencing rain like this, stay dry. <laughs> Talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.